good. Here we go. And we are live on YouTube. Welcome to the special edition of My Swim Pro, How to Swim Perfect Freestyle Technique. This is a Q&A session. I wanted to get things going by talking about some of the fundamentals of freestyle. So before we get into the Q&A, and if you have any Q&A, any questions, let me know in the comments of the live stream. I'm also broadcasting right now on Instagram. So thank you so much for joining us from all over the world. In today's session, we're going to first talk about the freestyle technique. I have an iPad here. This is actually Michael Phelps. If you guys are a fan of those uh, analysis sessions I've been doing, I actually have a video coming out on Michael Phelps's freestyle as well as Michael Phelps's butterfly technique. So that's uh, really exciting. Stay tuned for that. I also did one on Caleb Dressel, um, Katie Ledecky. So we're going to be breaking down not only uh, swimming from Michael Phelps, we're also going to look at a few different um, animations. Check out this animation. These are all available on all of our social media and the My Swim Pro app. So if you haven't already downloaded the My Swim Pro app, make sure you check it out. I'm going to be analyzing this in a little bit more detail, but I want to see you guys getting crazy here in the comments. I, I don't see enough love. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments of the live chat, and then we're going to get going. So before we, we get into the, the questions, I want to firstly talk about freestyle technique. So you know, I know the title of this video is Perfect Freestyle. And I guess before we go into what does perfect freestyle actually look like, you know, there's no such thing as perfect. So I want to make that clear. You know, we're always looking to improve. And I really believe that every swimmer can always get better. We can always find a way to improve. Even the best swimmers of the world, right? I have an analysis right here of Michael Phelps. And Michael Phelps is the greatest swimmer of all time. Time, you know, in freestyle, he he still, uh, you know, he holds the world records. He's amazing, right? And even in uh, Michael Phelps, right, we can still critique his technique and find different ways that even a Michael Phelps can improve. So, if the best swimmers in the world are finding ways to improve, you can certainly find ways to improve. So, there's no such thing as a perfect. We all aspire to be better and always try and improve upon ourselves. So that's really good. So there's hope for everyone. Perfect. Yes, I saw on Instagram a comment. Perfect means efficient. We're always trying to improve our efficiency. So when it comes to swimming freestyle or any other stroke, there's only two ways to actually swim faster. And if you guys have been following me on this channel and all of my swim pro content, I talk about this a lot. The first one is decreasing drag. So if you want to get faster in swimming, there's only two ways you do it. Number one is you decrease the amount of drag that you have. Remember, water is this medium that is 800 times more resistive than air. I mean, just look at this. Look at all, this is Michael Phelps swimming and look at all the bubbles that he has around his hands, right? That is all displacing water and that's called resistance. So there's a couple of things that you want to do to try and minimize the resistance, but that is actually the most important thing. It is more important than getting stronger or, you know, anything else, improving your streamline. We'll talk about all these things. That is the most important thing. The second way that you can actually improve your swimming and get faster is by increasing propulsion. And so these two things are the only ways that you can actually get better at swimming. I, I know it sounds so simple and it, it actually is. So the first one we're going to talk about is how do you actually decrease your drag so that way you can swim more efficiently. And the way you do this is actually focusing on your head position, right? So when we think about, you know, I'm going to go back to Michael Phelps here a number of times. When we think about head position, right? Where are his eyes looking right now? This is Michael Phelps, right? His eyes are looking down. That's the yellow arrow. And so if you lift your head up, your hips are going to sink. And if you notice, I have a red line dissecting the middle of his body, right? That's your body posture. You want to have a neutral head position, meaning your eyes are down and your head is in line with your spine. And if you don't do that, if you lift your head up, then your legs are going to sink. And the reason why this slows you down is like, it's like your legs are an anchor. If you guys have seen like a hydroplane, you know, a boat that just propels on top of the water. Like a very small part of the boat is actually touching the surface of the water. There's nothing dragging underneath it. And so you want to position your body in the same 
way. If you guys are just joining, welcome to my swim pro. We're doing a fun Q&A, how to swim perfect freestyle. I have Michael Phelps' freestyle, and we're doing a quick analysis here. If you guys haven't checked out the other analysis videos we've done, they're in all of our social media channels. So make sure you're subscribed and follow us across all of our different channels. Just a quick aside. Now let's get back to his head position. So if you notice, he's looking down. If he were to lift his head up, his legs would sink. So if you, again, we're talking about how do you decrease drag? If you want to swim faster, you have to decrease drag. How do you decrease drag? You look at the bottom of the pool. I know it sounds so, so simple and it's like, no, it can't be that easy. It actually is guys. It is. It's that easy. Just look at the bottom of the pool. Don't look at where your hands are going, right? You're going to swim. If you're a swimmer, you, you, your hands are fine. They'll take care of themselves. Look at the bottom of the pool. There's a black line on the bottom for a reason. And if you swim open water, you might see schools of fish or you might see nothing at all if the water is not very clean. If it's kind of murky, that's fine. It's that easy. It's that easy. Just look at the bottom of the pool, okay? So number one is, is the head position. That's what we've got. And then number two is the body position. So that's what this red line is. Now I'm going to go ahead and actually we'll come back to Michael Phelps. He's, uh, he's a good guy to come back to. Let's look at these swimmers. Look at their body positions. They're pretty much flat, meaning their head is looking down and their tire you know, profile in the water is relatively small. They're not displacing a lot of water. Let's go back to Michael Phelps. You see that red line, right? That red line is the spine and your body is rotating upon that axis. We'll talk about rotation in just a second. But I first wanna emphasize how do you decrease drag? By focusing on your head position, looking down at the bottom of the pool. I know it's boring. I know you don't want to do it, but you got to do it. It's got to do it. So look at the bottom of the pool and then that'll align the rest of your body. A lot of times swimmers ask, well, how do you breathe? Like, don't you have to lift up your head? No, you want to keep your head in a neutral position so that as you breathe, you rotate, you rotate on your side and you're able to keep one eye and one ear underneath the water. It's so important. So important when you breathe, you don't disrupt because a lot of times, and even if you guys watch the analysis I did on Katie Ledecky, when Katie Ledecky breathes, she lifts her head up. Even uh, Caleb Dressel, that video I believe is coming out next week, so stay tuned. When we did the analysis on Caleb Dressel, his head is coming out of the water like 45 at a 45 degree angle, right? These are the best swimmers in the world and they can still improve these things, right? If you look at Michael Phelps, it looks like his head position is uh, relatively neutral. I have the arrow going down. Maybe it's not 90 degrees. Maybe it's, uh, I don't know, like 80 degrees. So it's pretty good, pretty good. But when you breathe, you have to rotate onto your side. Let's go ahead and skip to the animations here. If you look at when they're breathing, you keep one eye in the water and one ear in the water at all times, right? It's really important that you focus on keeping your head in a neutral position. <laughs> I got a shout out on Instagram. Where's Mr. Teddy? Mr. Teddy's right here, guys. Hey, what's up, what's up? All right, so back to the swimming. So it's really important. Let's go back to Michael Phelps. Head position, body position, and then the breath happens as you rotate. Now let's talk about rotation for a second because this is something that is often misunderstood. The reason why you rotate is you want to increase your distance per stroke. That's part one. Part two, you want to drive with rotational momentum. So when, once you stick your, you know, you got your hands, right? This is how you swim fast for yourself. Your fingertips slide into the water, right? At a 45 degree angle, okay? 45 degree angle. As your fingertips slide into the water, you're trying to extend as far as you can in front of your shoulder. And if you don't rotate, if you stay flat, then you're going to decrease the total distance per stroke you can achieve. In other words, if you're only, you know, 1.5 meters tall, you're, you're a shorter person and you swim flat, you're going to swim like someone who is 1.5 meters tall. I'm talking about someone who's like five feet, four foot 10, right? Instead, we want to try and elongate our body. I mean, you can even see it in Michael Phelps right here. He, he, even though this is the most neutral part of the stroke, he's still at an angle meaning his, his body's already rotated onto his side. And when we look at our animation, friends, there's rotation. The reason why you rotate is to increase your distance per stroke as well as use the rotational momentum of your body using your hips to drive that rotation. Because if you don't use your hips to rotate and you swim flat, you're not only going to decrease your distance per stroke, 
but you're also going to reduce the amount of power that you have with every single stroke because there is no rotational momentum. So this is really, really important. A lot of times swimmers mistake that the rotation happens with your shoulders, with your upper body. And yes, you definitely rotate with your upper body, but you want to think about it as a rotation that comes from your hips. The rotation does not come from your shoulders. Even if it feels like that, it's more important to drive that rotation with your hips, with your core, your diaphragm, right? This is, you know, they're talking the six pack. You don't have to have a six pack. It doesn't really matter. Your, it's your core. This, these, these muscles right here is where the magic happens in terms of rotation, driving with your hips. And as you drive with your hips, then it makes it easier to lead with your shoulder. But you actually start it with your hips. A lot of people get that backwards. They, they think, oh, okay, I got to stick my hand in the water and then I'm going to extend and my shoulders do all the rotating. No, your hips drive the rotation. Now, the next part of this is how much do you rotate? This is a great question. How much do you rotate when you swim freestyle? Do you go all the way to your side? Do you, let's just let's look at these animation swimmers. What are they doing? What are these swimmers doing? Are they rotating all the way to their side? Nah, they're not. You're rotating maybe halfway there. And it really depends on how fast you're swimming. The faster you swim, the less rotation. Maybe you're only rotating 10 to 15 percent rotation, 10 to 15 degrees to each side. If you're swimming more casual swimming and you're really trying to maximize your distance per stroke, fitness swimming, endurance, then you're going to rotate maybe 45 degrees. So like you're, you're not all the way on your side, you're halfway there. Now there's a few great drills that you can focus on this rotation. You know, one of them is three strokes with 12 kicks. This is where you take three strokes and then you balance all the way on your side your legs don't drive the rotation, it's your hips, but the benefit of balancing on your side is so that you get your body comfortable with balancing. I hope that makes sense. So make sure you, you have full rotation, but it's coming from your hips and you only rotate all the way to your side if you're doing a drill where you kick, you know, with one arm extended and you kick on your side. I hope that makes sense. So we talked about... The head position, body position. I showed you guys with Michael Faust how you breathe, how you rotate. We're missing something that's really fundamental, and that is how you pull the water. How do you catch the water? Now, I, I hope everyone who's watching has done the fist drill. And if you haven't, basically what you do is you put your hand in a fist and you, you basically try and grab the water with your forearm. And so... When you swim with a fist drill, what you're doing is you're basically reducing the surface area of your hands. You might be thinking to yourself, what a crazy lunatic this guy is. Why would he do that? What is he talking about? The reason why you want to reduce your surface area is so that you can engage your musculature and improve your technique to grab the water with your forearm. And if you can grab the water with your forearm, then when you open up your hand, and you have more surface area to grab, you're going to engage more musculature and you're going to increase the total surface area of the water that you can grab. This is a really, really important concept. And this, let me tell you guys and gals from all over the world, this is the difference between the best swimmers in the world and swimmers who are not as good. <laughs> so if you see two swimmers and they both have been swimming for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, and one of them is able to swim so much faster than the other swimmer. And maybe they're the same size, same strength level. It most likely comes down to how good of a catch the swimmer has. How much surface area are you able to grab? Not only with your hands. If you think about it, like, look at my hands. My hands are only so big, right? This is my, my hand. The iPad is way bigger than my hand. Look at this. See this? My hand is not very large. However, if I can catch the water with my hand as well as my forearm and my whole arm, and I can get an early vertical forearm, then I can pull multiple times the amount of water. And if you can get this technique down, you're going to continuously work on improving it. It's going to feel really awkward at first if you focus on, you know, with a fist drill at first, and then eventually you open up your hand and you start to grab the water. 
Yes, it's going to feel awkward. It's going to feel slow. That's okay. We're not trying to break the world record tomorrow. You're not trying to go a best time tomorrow. You know, swimming is a lifelong sport. So it's okay if you uh, take time to develop these skills because that's natural. You're not going to get better overnight. It doesn't happen like that. You know, literally, if you take a few hundred strokes, a few thousand strokes, you take 10,000 strokes, then, and only then, when you take 10,000 strokes, you might be able to improve to a point where you actually see and feel that big of a difference. Now, a thousand strokes or 10,000 strokes, I know it sounds like a lot, but it's really not. If you take 20 strokes per length and you swim 20 lengths, you just did 400 strokes in one session and you only swam 500 meters, okay? So, you know, very easily in a week, you're taking thousands or tens of thousands of strokes. And so in a matter of weeks, you can start to focus on some of the things that we talked about. Now, if you have questions, and I see some of them on Instagram and YouTube, I'm gonna get to them individually. I just wanna talk about one more thing on the freestyle technique, and then we're gonna get into the Q&A. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about is something that is really counterintuitive. I, I basically, I'm about to say some things that disagree with what most swimming information is out there. So bear with me, but I'll give you my reasoning as to why, <laughs> why I'm sharing this advice, okay? So I've got my iPad right here. Now this is Michael Phelps. Let's take a look at what's going on with his legs, all right? So uh, let's see him, okay. So if you notice, he's kicking, okay? And that's fine. This is Michael Phelps swimming at high effort, high speed. He knows he is being filmed right now. When you look at a high level swimmer like a Katie Ledecky, who I do have actually a screenshot. Let's find Katie Ledecky. Let's find Katie. Oh, there she is. That's Caleb Dressel. If you guys haven't seen Caleb Dressel, make sure you check that one out. Um, and just a reminder, I am going live on YouTube. So I'll be answering the questions off of YouTube as well as Instagram. So make sure you guys are tuning in there. But if you look at any top swimmer, here's Caleb Dressel, right? He's got a lot of kick. Look at the look at the momentum of his kick, okay? So kicking is super important when you're sprinting. For fitness swimmers and beginners, I don't even want you to worry about the kick at all. Like, don't even kick. Like, you see these top swimmers, look at that underwater dolphin kick. I mean, he's a monster. Look at that, right? That's not you. You're not racing a, at the Olympics in the 100 or the 50-meter freestyle. And so that being said... I actually find it more beneficial to tell beginner swimmers, I don't even want you to kick at all. Don't use your legs. Again, this is counterintuitive. It's like, well, no, I want to kick. I want to get my total body engaged. Remember, your legs are the biggest muscles of your body. They are the most the, the most powerful. If you think about how, how, you know, doing a push-up versus doing a squat or, you know, doing a pull-up versus going to a leg press, you can move a lot more weight with your legs. Your legs are stronger the problem is because your legs are so big and they're so muscular, they drain oxygen because they have so much blood flow. And that oxygen is more efficiently used in other areas of your body, like your pull. And so the goal, remember, when we go back to how do you swim faster, there's only two ways to do it. You decrease drag or you increase propulsion. So for your legs, rather than thinking about increasing propulsion by kicking more, just don't kick and focus on decreasing drag. Instead, you wanna put your body through a cylindrical tube and you don't want your legs to move at all. Now, I wanna be careful because I don't wanna say, just let your legs drag and don't kick at all. That's not what I'm saying. Instead, don't focus on your legs. I want your legs to be relatively controlled, but they're there for balance. They're not actually driving propulsion. Now, if you wanna swim fast, under 200, under 150 meters, you're going to need to use your legs. And it's really important to do kick sets in every single workout in the warm up to make sure you're warming up your body appropriately and have the right variations of speed. Because if you don't do that, then you're not then you're not going to get a good workout in if you don't warm up your legs at all. So, I know it's a little confusing, but in general, if I can summarize and simplify and then we're going to do the Q&A, I want you to de-emphasize your kick in longer swims or longer aerobic swims. Get into a rhythm. Maybe it's a two-beat kick. Maybe it's a four-beat kick. Maybe it's a six-beat kick. But by over-focusing on your kick, especially for a beginner, that is going to drain the oxygen in your blood because it's sending all that blood to your legs. You want that oxygenated blood 
to go to your upper body. It's more efficient to move your arms uh, as you train instead of just kicking all the time. It's just going to drain you. Now, if you're a more advanced swimmer, and this is the big thing, I, don't, I hope people don't come back and quote me and be like, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. The more elite of a swimmer you are, the more advanced you are, then what I say starts to take a little bit less weight. Because if you're trying to get to the next level of swimming and you're already proficient and endurance isn't your issue, you're trying to get faster. Yes, kicking is very important. And the only way you're going to kick or the only way you're going to improve is by improving all elements of the stroke, which is the pull, the catch, the kick, right? So I'm not saying kicking is like worthless. Not at all. You saw Michael Phelps and Caleb Dressel. Right? They're creating a ton of white water. It's because they're moving fast. Look at Caleb Dressel. Do you see that kick? That That's what you do when you're going fast. When you're in the pool and you're just training and you're swimming for fitness, you're trying to lose weight, only do the kick in the warm-up, short, fast kick, de-emphasize your legs because it's much more important for the longevity of your swimming to not use your legs as much. Now, again, Last, last point here, you're still using your legs, but you're not emphasizing them. You're emphasizing your upper body, okay? So I hope that is a great overview of the freestyle technique. Now I'm so excited to get into the Q&A. You guys have been so patient. Thank you so much. Some of these questions I already answered. I, I kind of saw them as they were coming in and I already answered them, um, but I will go back and make sure I answer them. Let's start from the beginning. Here we go. Question on YouTube, Kurian Donnie, how important is not breathing on the first two strokes? That's a great question. So in a race, especially, you want to leverage your speed off the dive or the push off the wall, and you do not want to breathe. In a 50 you know, or 100, maybe it's four strokes or six strokes or eight strokes that you don't want to breathe at all because you want to maintain speed. Now, if you're training regularly, yeah, maybe you take one stroke or two strokes off the wall and then you breathe. But it's a great habit to get into, and I, I fall, I fail at this sometimes, to not breathe on the first stroke off the wall. I know you want the oxygen. It feels so good. Oh, man, that felt so good. And when you're in the water and you're, you know, you need that oxygen, it feels good. But it slows you down, and it's not going to train you as well. So if you need air, obviously take air. But try and focus on not breathing those first two strokes. Great question. Okay, here we go. Through my eyes on YouTube. I am 37, female, five foot five. I swim four days a week, 2,000 each day. Okay, all right, great for you. My freestyle is stuck at 140 for 100 yards, short course for years. Do I have much room to improve my speed at this age and training intensity? Yes, yes, yes. The answer is yes times 100. Of course you can improve. So I love this question because I know a lot of people are in a similar position as you you know it, the age doesn't really matter the height doesn't really matter it's swimming four times a week two thousand yards a session and you're swimming 140 pace per 100 first of all that's actually really solid you know that's faster than probably a lot of people who are watching this um 140 it doesn't matter if it's 140 130 two minutes 210 you can improve and the way you're going to improve is is Two things. Number one is improving your technique, improving your distance per stroke. That's going to help a lot. Number two, now here's the big one. It sounds like you probably already have a, a relatively good technique if you're able to swim, you know, 8,000 yards per week at 140 pace. Now you need to do more speed training in your workouts. Otherwise, you're going to plateau and actually get slower. You know, if you want to get faster, you have to swim faster. And, and uh, that doesn't sound like it means anything, but it does. If you want to swim fast, you have to train fast. So you can't swim the same speed all the time. You have to do shorter workouts, higher intensity, higher speed. And if you're looking for great programs, make sure you check out the My Swim Pro app. We have tons of training programs in there. While I have your attention, this is a great plug. If you guys are not already in the My Swim Pro Facebook group, Thank you for watching on YouTube, Instagram, or wherever you end up watching this. Make sure you join our Facebook group. We'll link it in the YouTube uh, video description. It's amazing. We have thousands of swimmers from over 100 different countries who are all passionate about swimming faster and smarter than ever before. So if you're not in that group, you're missing out. And it's a free group, so that you don't have anything to lose. So I, most of you are probably on Facebook. So go over to Facebook. You can type in My Swim Pro Global Community, and you can say that you found out about the group. 
from this uh, video live stream freestyle Q&A with Ferris, CEO of my swim pro. So uh, now that we got that out of the way, great question. At 37, yes, you can improve at 140 pace. You just got to swim faster in training. Here we go. Question. Uh, let's go on uh, Instagram. All right. There's a lot of questions here on Instagram. Thank you guys so much for joining. Um, a lot of different languages too. How wide should your kick be? Zach, that is a great question. I skipped over this when I talked about kicking. Uh, <laughs> So when we're talking about how big your kick should be, if we're going to use my legs at my hands, my fingers as your legs, right? Your kick, the amplitude is the total distance between the two points. So from your toes to your heels, the amplitude depends on your size, but it should be less than half a meter. How big is half a meter? Basically think about this iPad, right? This right here, a little bit bigger is the total amplitude of your kick. Now, you might think, well, why not bigger? The bigger the kick, the faster you swim. No, that is wrong. You're wrong. Whoever told you that is wrong. And if they don't believe you, send them this video. The reason why that doesn't work is if you kick bigger, yes, you'll increase the total volume of water that you are able to propel. However, this increase in volume is negated by the increase in resistance because your kick now extends beyond your body line. Remember, we're trying to decrease your total resistance in the water. And the only way you can decrease your resistance is by making your profile in the water smaller. I'm going to go ahead and pull up uh, the Michael Phelps. Uh, here we go. Let's go find Michael Phelps. There he is. Okay, and here's Michael Phelps, right? If you think, if you look at his, uh, oh, let me zoom in. If you look at his chest, right, that is the biggest area of displacement of his body. If his kick is any wider than his chest, it will slow him down. And you're the same thing. So look at his leg. One leg is straight. One leg is doing the kick. He's bending his knee actually a little bit too much. He's bending his knee too much. You want to keep your legs straighter, kick with your hip, but the kick needs to be, the amplitude needs to be smaller than the frame of your body. And for most human beings, your body, your chest, you know, you need to keep it within half a meter. So that way you're getting propulsion, but you're not increasing the displacement of the water so that it increases the amount of drag. And that increase in drag negates any increase in propulsion that you were getting. And this concept actually applies for every single stroke. The breaststroke kick, butterfly, dolphin kick. All right, here we go. Let's go. Another question here on uh, YouTube. Um, there's so many questions. Oh, my God. All right. My current time in the 100 meter is one minute and four seconds. Do you have advice how to get faster? All right. Great question. So you have a certain time. And this is how you should approach uh, any, any kind of race. So let's say your time is, you know, you want to go under a minute in the 100. You want to go under two minutes in the 100. You want to go under four minutes in the, the, the 400. Whatever your, whatever your goal is, whatever the race is. So if you have a specific event that you're trying to get faster at, what you need to do, first of all, is you need to know your own splits pretty well. So if we're taking 100, for example, and you know your best time, you need to know how you currently split the race. So let's take the, the 104, for example, our, our gentleman, or, uh, or it's Michaela. Michaela, great, great name. So Michaela goes a 104. I don't know what her splits are in the 50s. Maybe she goes 31 seconds, 33 seconds, and that's how she goes a 104. Maybe she goes 30 seconds, 34 seconds. I'm not really sure. She needs to know exactly what her splits are. And even better than that, she needs to know what her splits are by 25. Because maybe, just maybe, she is going really fast in the beginning and then she falls apart and she's not able to maintain her pace throughout the whole race. And if she could maintain her pace, then she would go faster. So in that example, let's say she goes 30, 34. She wants to go with 102 instead of a 104. It's a lot easier to go that 102 if you just go 30 seconds, 32 seconds, instead of going 34 on the second 50. So you could do the same thing. If you go 102, you go out in a 28, you go out in 28, you come back in 34. Let me tell you, it's a lot easier to figure out ways to go just as fast using less energy on the first half of the race 
and then come back stronger. And so because that's most of the time how you get faster um, in, in these types of scenarios, I'm going to give that example. So if you want to get faster at the 100, most likely you're going to do it by maintaining your speed. You're not actually getting any faster. You just need to go the first 25 meters of the race using less energy, more power per stroke. And so that's why it's so important to know what your splits are. So that way in training, you can focus on swimming fast with more efficiency. And regardless of the stroke or what training environment, if you're following workouts in the My Swim Pro app or you're doing your own workouts, whatever, it doesn't really matter. It's so important that you know your splits and you know the time you're trying to hit. So maybe you need to average 15 seconds per 25 meters. Maybe you need to average 16 seconds per 25. It, it really depends on what your goal time is and how fast you're trying to go. And so in training, you can focus on your stroke count and reducing your stroke count to hit your goal time. And as you can improve your endurance and you do that by improving your efficiency, then when you get to the race, you're going to go 30, 32, boom, you just want a 102. You didn't actually get any faster, right? You, you still went out in a 30, but you went out in a 30 using less energy and you have more, more power on the second half. Another way to think about this is negative splitting. So when you're training, and this applies for anyone in any race, whether you're doing a 100 meter free or a five kilometer, all of your training, you should really focus on negative splitting. Unless you're trying to be the world's best swimmer in a 25 meter freestyle, almost everything you do should have an intention on negative splitting. That means you go faster on the second half. Here's an example. You're doing 10 100s freestyle. 10 100s freestyle. Sounds like a lot. Every single 100, you should try a negative split. Meaning if you go 40 seconds on the first 50, you should try and go 39 seconds on the second 50. Or at the very least, you should even split it. So you go 40, 40. In those 10 100s of the set, you should also descend them. So you're negative splitting the set, meaning if you go 120 on the first 100, then 120, then 120, then 119, 119, 118, 118, 117, 117, 116, 116. So you started out averaging 120, and then you worked your way over, and then you were averaging 116. And so that is negative splitting the set, and ideally you negative split each each repetition within the set. So that's a great strategy for improving your racing, your training, your endurance. And by putting all of that together, you will improve your overall swimming and hopefully you find enjoyment. Okay. I think we have time for a couple more, a couple more questions here. Let's get into the good. Ooh, we got some good ones. Okay. This is a good question. I think we're going to end on this one. It has to do with, I think this applies for the difference between sprint training distance training and racing and open water. So here's the question. How does distance per stroke differ in pool swimming versus open water swimming? I'm not getting more than one meter per stroke in the ocean. Okay. So this concept of your distance per stroke depends, I would say more so on your style of swimming, the distance than the medium, if you're in a pool or open water. So let's first talk about the pool and then I'll take it to the open water. So in the pool, the longer the distance you're swimming, the less strokes you should take. So let's say you're swimming a thousand meters continuously. Your goal should be to take one or two less strokes per length on that thousand than if you had to do a fast 100. Because in the fast 100, your tempo is gonna be a little bit higher. Your distance per stroke is gonna be shorter. It's okay if you're less efficient because you're only doing a hundred. When you get into a longer distance, like a thousand in the pool, your distance per stroke should increase and therefore your stroke rate will also decrease and you're gonna take less strokes. Now, when we go to open water, you have a little bit of a reversal happening actually. So the, the least amount of strokes that you're ever gonna take is in a pool for something that's really, really long. When you go to open water, because of the variability between the waves, the current, the temperature, the fish, seaweed, uh, spotting, all of these things actually make you less efficient. Therefore, you have a slightly higher stroke rate 
and your distance per stroke is not going to be as good in open water unless you're swimming in, in water that is extremely calm and like it looks like glass. Like you can see right at the surface level of the water. It just it's so flat. If, if that's the case, that's pretty much like you're swimming in a pool. That's not really that much different than a pool. But if it's wavy, if you're in the sea, in the ocean, in a lake, there's there's chop, there's current, there's seaweed, there's birds, there's there's uh, goldfish. There's no goldfish. If there's fish in the water, I got like mango over here. What's up? What's up? So if you have all these different variables, it is going to make your distance per stroke lower. And that's okay because the water, you're just less efficient and that's fine. So don't worry about like squeezing out maximum distance per stroke. If you slow down your tempo too much in open water, that can actually hurt you. You actually want to increase your tempo a little bit in the open water, a little bit shorter distance per stroke because you don't want to overdo your rotation and things like that because you have so many variables and you want to just get into a rhythm. And it's a lot easier to do that, obviously, in a pool when it's completely flat. If it's choppy and wavy and yeah, you're gonna take more strokes, that's okay. I wouldn't stress about trying to squeeze out every last centimeter in the distance per stroke, okay? So, like I said, thank you so much for joining everyone from around the world. If you guys have not already subscribed to this channel, whether you're watching on YouTube or Instagram, make sure you follow my swim pro on all of our different social media and especially join the VIP Facebook group. It is amazing, guys. It is absolutely just insane. And it's 100% free. How cool is that? So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you join the Facebook group, My Swim Pro Global Community, 100% free. I hope to see you guys in there. And if you haven't already downloaded the My Swim Pro app, make sure you download the My Swim Pro app because it's free to download. And you can get access to a personalized training program for the pool, for open water, dry land training. We help athletes all over the world improve their performance and health both in and out of the water. So if you're looking to take your swimming to the next level, swim faster and smarter than ever before, you've come to the right place. So make sure you download the MySwim Pro app, join me in the Facebook group, and you can see my personal workouts that I log in there as well as all the other members of our community. Make sure you follow me in the MySwim Pro app so you can check it out and check out all the stats I have. I hope to see you guys next time and happy swimming. Bye. See you guys later.